What's up, everybody? Go Burns here. And since it is Independence Day here in America, I thought it would be fitting to do my review of the Independence Day special. And I've done this for several previous DLCs, even though my gaming channel has only been around since March of this year. But I did one for High Life, I've done one for Hipster, and this is basically how my reviews break down. I will tell you the pros of the DLC, I will tell you the cons of the DLC, then I will tell you about the Decepticons and the Autobots. <laughs> just kidding. Basically, the whole review is just my opinion, okay? So, I don't claim to be all-knowing, I don't claim to be the final word. This review is just how I feel about the DLC. And in the end, after ranting a little bit and throwing in my two cents worth of whatnot, I will let you know if I think that Independence Day Special does or does not add to Grand Theft Auto Online. So let's go ahead and get started with the pros. First off, the two new vehicles, the new Liberator Monster Truck. Now there's a pro and a con to this one. The pro is it's a big fun stupid truck that you can get and ride around and do a lot of fun off-roading and running over vehicles having a good time it's a lot of fun the downside is you have to order it from Pegasus and that's 200 bucks a pop except for this weekend during the Independence Day event weekend which is free so everything you get through Pegasus the $200 is waived for now but Monday it'll probably be back so in the future You'll have to pay 200 bucks every time you want to use your Liberator after paying, what, 740 something thousand dollars for it to begin with. So that's one of the downsides, and also you can't store it in your garage. The other vehicle, the Sovereign Motorcycle. That's right, the Western Sovereign. It's a fun hog. It's very easy on the road, but it does have a few cons as well. Now, it's comparable with some of the other motorcycles in the game, but at the same time, my issue with the Sovereign is that you don't have any additional mod options for it. Besides, of course, everything else, the brakes, engine, wheels, etc. I just wish that Rockstar would have had different uh, Stars and Stripes palettes that you could choose from for the Sovereign. Or the ability to take the saddlebags off. You get the idea. So, yes, it's, it's kind of a pro and con issue with the Sovereign. But I think, overall, it's good to have both those vehicles added to Grand Theft Auto Online. Plus, they are both a lot of fun. All right, moving on to the next pro is probably one of the big ones. People love masks in this game. They absolutely love all the different masks. And Rockstar delivered with 12 very well-designed, brand-new animal masks. They look awesome. Of course, the con here is the fact that they are very expensive. Plus, they're also part of the limited edition aspects of the DLC. So, if you don't get your mask within a few weeks, they're going to be gone forever and you won't be able to purchase a wolf or a bear or an eagle or a vulture or what was the other one? There was, a, there was another one. <laughs> the buffalo or the bull. So you won't be able to purchase all those again if you don't get them within the uh, deadline. But fortunately, you have plenty of time to do so. So that's not really a big issue. The next one, large assortment of patriotic clothing like hats, t-shirts, and other outfits. You got over 40 to choose from. And I'll talk about the uh, con aspect of that in a moment. We'll move on to property. So let's do that. Seven new properties to choose from. Three up in Polito Bay, one in Grapeseed, one in Sandy Shores. A lot of people have been asking about homes outside of the Los Santos area. Of course, you still have two new homes to choose from in Los Santos. One up in Vinewood, one out in uh, East Los Santos by Lester. And of course, those are pretty cool. They're pretty sweet. Nothing too fancy. High end, low ends. Some are six car homes. Some are two car homes. <laughs> and the one in Sandy Shores is a dump. So, overall, it's good to have new property to choose from in the game. Next is all the patriotic stuff you can add to your vehicle, like the uh, tire smoke, which is red, white, and blue. I got that on one of my vehicles. The uh, four separate star-spangled ba bannered horns you can choose from. And, of course, the uh, patriotic parachute smoke you can get as well. All that, I believe, is also limited edition, which is, in my opinion, a con about that. It should be able to purchase it whenever you want, but I understand the idea of making things a limited edition. It adds uniqueness to it. Of course, another limited edition item, which you can get in the uh, barber shop, not just the mullets. <laughs> but if you want, you can also get a Stars and Stripes face paint. That's right, so you can have kind of a 
unique face paint with the uh, stars and stripes on there. And of course, one of the things I really liked about the addition of the Independence Day special is some of the things that they worked on behind the scenes. And of course, you can go look at that list down below. I got a link to you, and it's in the support section for Rockstar. And since I'm a big survival guy, I love playing survival, they made it now to where you get increased Grand Theft Auto currency for completing survivals. And I do not have a problem with that. That is awesome. Another issue that Rockstar tweaked was the mental state, something I was ranting about a few weeks ago. It just seemed really easy to jack up your mental state from normal to psychopath, even if you were just killing NPCs. So I kind of had an issue with that. So hopefully mental state's a lot better than it was. The armored trucks not dropping currency. This has happened to me several times in the game throughout the past month or so. It hasn't happened recently, so obviously Rockstar finally did something about it. You'd go up, you'd either you know sticky bomb the back of an armored truck, or you'd get in front of it with your vehicle, kind of barricade it, then run back with the shotgun. You go through all the trouble, getting the three star warnings, the doors open, nothing. You get jacked. <laughs> it sucked. But it looks like Rockstar fixed that. They also fixed the UFO spawning all over the place. That bug, that glitch, that hack, whatever it was. So they fixed a number of issues. So that's something I really do appreciate about Update 1.15, the Independence Day Special Review. And of course, the two new weapons, the musket and the firework rocket launcher. The fireworks, even though they're limited time, they are kind of sort of fun. You can use those courtesy of your inventory section. And, of course, the brand new rides you can get on down at Vespucci Beach, the uh, Leviathan, and the Ferris Well, even though the Ferris Well is rather long and boring. But it's extra stuff you and your friends can do in free mode. So that's something I've been saying for a while now. We need more stuff to do in free mode. And those two rides are additional things you can enjoy now. Okay, so let's move on to all the cons. I did mention a few cons, but... Here's the heavy cons, the big issues that I and many others have had with Independence Day Special. First off, we're still restricted to owning only two properties. Now, when High Life came out and Rockstar gave us the option to buy a second property in order to have up to 20 cars, we were all happy. We were all exciting. We thought, yay, yay, this is great. But then Hipster came out with seven brand new cars. And then, of course, we got a new motorcycle in the Independence Day special. And then the next DLC, which may be weeks away or a month away, it'll probably have new vehicles. So you kind of see a trend here where Rockstar is going to continue releasing new vehicles and people are going to run out of space again. So my issue there is we need the option to have more properties than just two. Perhaps even just open it to where you can buy as many properties and garages as you want, as long as you can afford it. I think that's probably the direction we're going to be heading. So sooner rather than later, we need at least three properties, perhaps more, because I really did want to buy one of those uh, homes just to have it, you know. Plus, it would have been nice to have a garage for six additional vehicles. Anyways, that's one of the cons I have. Hopefully, they'll work on that in the future and allow us to at least get three properties and somewhere down the road four properties and so on. The next issue, a lot of people are angry about this. The firework rocket launcher ammo will be going away after this DLC expires in a few weeks. That's right. A lot of people spent $65,000 on the rocket launcher, the new firework rocket launcher, and they've been having a lot of fun with it. And unfortunately, if the ammo goes away, you're going to be screwed because once you run out of ammo for the firework rocket launcher, you'll never be able to use it unless they bring it back for uh, New Year's Eve for a DLC around that time. So I think that if anyone that spent money on the firework rocket launcher should either A, have the option to continue purchasing ammo for that firework rocket launcher, or, or since we're basically not going to be allowed to use it technically once we run out of ammo, maybe Rockstar should just reimburse everybody that bought it, you know, the 65 grand, just recredit it back to people's accounts and just allow you to have it for free and just purchase the ammo until it expires. I don't know if there's a real positive solution there, but those are just two options I throw on the table. So that's definitely another big con concerning the Independence Day special. All right, so here's some other issues. We got a single-shot musket, which is okay. It looks really cool, by the way. It looks cool. The animation is cool for when you're you know, packing it back up. But <laughs> still no swords. 
the Calvary Sword, a saber. That would have been sweet. That would have been very fitting for this special. We didn't get a saber, not a sword, a machete, katana, nothing. Come on, Rockstar. I know it sounds tiresome to hear this from me, but I'm going to keep saying it until we actually have a real bladed weapon besides a knife. I want a freaking sword, damn it. We only got one hairstyle, the mullet. You know, it would have been nice if we'd have gotten something else. Like, for example, how about some wig options? That would have been cool, you know, from the revolutionary times. Maybe even some uh, tricorn hats. That would have been nice. And female characters, once again, got the shaft when it came to clothing. And you can go and do the comparison for yourself. Yeah, male characters got way more stuff than the female characters. And I think that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Anyways, a few more little tidbits I would like to see and say maybe if we have a next year's Independence Day DLC for 2015. You know, the wigs, like I mentioned, tricorn hats, maybe even a little bit more nostalgia going back to revolutionary times with, you know, red coats, blue coats, green coats. That would be awesome. And perhaps even maybe a musket pistol. So overall, weighing the pros and cons, I would say that the Independence DLC is not the best of the DLCs altogether, but it definitely adds a lot of stuff to Grand Theft Auto Online. So there you have it, my two cents regarding the Independence Day special. I think it was pretty good, even though it's only going to be a limited time. Not everything. Some of the things we'll actually be able to continue to purchase, like the motorcycle, the Liberator, the new homes. I think that's about it. But anyways, let me know below in the comment section what you thought about the Independence Day special. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you not really care for it one way or the other? And if you actually agree to me most part regarding the pros and cons and the overall review of the Independence Day special, hit the like button. Now I'm almost done wrapping up this video, but I do have an addendum or two I'd like to add before we're done. First off, I want to thank Rockstar for choosing not to go the PC route when it came to the name of this DLC. They could have simply gone with July 4th, but instead they chose Independence Day. So big props to Rockstar for that. Secondly, I realize that Los Santos is based in a fictional version of America. But at the same time, there are a lot of people around the world that do enjoy playing Grand Theft Auto Online. And I hope that Rockstar does eventually come out with, say, a world DLC where we have various options from various countries like Canada, Mexico, the UK, countries in Europe, in Russia, in Asia, in Africa, and South America and Central America, all around the globe. For you to choose from different shirts caps outfits etc especially from countries around the world that obviously have a lot of gamers in it that enjoy grand theft auto online and i know rockstar has a way of tabulating that all you have to do is go to the social club page and see what country everybody is from so figure out where your top 10 countries are rockstar and make that happen i'm sure they're already working on that <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks for taking the time to listening to my whole review of the Independence Day special. And if you enjoy the content, which I post daily, seven days a week, please hit the subscribe button. That helps my gaming channel grow. It also encourages me to make more videos for you. Thanks for watching.